quit using Headspace, but he's been praying now for 10 minutes in the morning and night. Yeah. What that does is builds what you're wanting to see built on there. Mm -hmm. Now he, he's going to carry more integrity. Yep. Uh, he, 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 he's going to be truthful to himself. He's not yeah. going to camouflage anymore. And the way he brought it up was almost like, it, almost like, um, well, you know, I'm not doing that anymore. I'm, I'm doing this. Kind of as like uh, looking for me to be like, well, I thought you were going to do that. Yeah. When I was like, that's a million times better. <laughs> that's way better than stupid meditation. Like, yeah, meditation's great. Like, yeah. In addition to it, yeah, prayer. In addition to yeah. That's showing that we're mm -hmm. reaching every one of these areas. Yeah. This Because I'm about the total man. Mm -hmm. I'm about the total package yeah. is what I'm after. And when you do... You, uh, you, you talk about those five thousand; they're gonna come quicker than you think. Yeah. Well, and so, and so, what we're looking at doing um, over the next four episodes, because that was kind of like the intro. All right. New look, new mission. Yeah. Yeah. Same, like you know, transparency, all that. And what we're looking at, so we we call them life goals. L is love for relationships. I is influence, yeah. which is your mind and your spirit. Um, F is finance, which is your business. Mm -hmm. E is energy, which is your body. And so for the next four episodes, we're going to take each of those. So this episode will be on L for love, so it'll be about relationships. And we'll put a stronger focus on this episode on winning with relationships. And the goal is, as we're taking all the ages through this process, and these people that come on board, is we're is the cultures ingrained in them that you always have three goals in each of these areas every 90 days that we're going through with you on a month by month basis is that like the business side that just becomes a byproduct of winning in all the other areas because if you've got a good relationship with God if you've got a good relationship with your spouse with your family with so your friends important. then if you've got your body where you're getting in shape sure. and you're working out and you're doing the right things and then your your mind where because really and we could even I'm trying to think because we could even I would, ordinarily in the beginning, I would, have, I would have just said the influence, the mind, that that's where we talk about the relationship with God, but love, and, which is relationships, well, that's, that's, make more sense. That's the whole it's power more of sense it. There. Yeah, is, uh, mm. yeah, when you, when you take a good look, the love part has aspects in every arena. You, you could get there and live there for weeks and, and go into all sorts of arenas, and uh, especially uh, in the spiritual sense, but just important as the Spirit. No wonder the Lord says, love the Lord thy God with all your heart. Love your neighbor as yourself. So we got those two package deals that comes up and to each man, when he learns to do this, he becomes a powerful agent from within. Because all, and that's the thing Joe's talked about too, the interchange is so important mm -hmm. that if we don't take inspections to the inside, and take a look at what kind of rope, what kind of hook has got us. How do we how do we cut it loose? How do we get this and this going so that we that we're occupying fully and totally under the concept of life? You saw the daily bread. Here's the new recipe. You can't expect to see more transparency. Five thousand six figure earners. This success to me, giving the best of me, my living legacy. Alright guys, so uh, it's 2 o'clock in the afternoon. I'm actually headed right now to go pick up my daughter from school, take her home. Uh, our nanny's at the house, my wife's uh, not running some errands, and uh, I get to surprise my daughter, which is awesome. She's going to be super surprised. I don't usually don't get, a, get to pick her up um, too often. Uh, it's always a lot of fun when I do. And uh, it's really going to be a lot of the focus of this episode. It's really focusing on what does it mean to be in balance? And to me, it's this reality that there is no such thing as balance. It's being able to identify the imbalances. It's being able to be aware enough to know when certain areas are, are out of balance. Being aware to know when you need to spend more time with your family, when you need to spend more time at work, when you need to spend more time on your body, when you need, your, when you need to spend more time on your mind. And, and it's really just this harmony of like constantly trying to balance the imbalances, but knowing that you're never gonna be in perfect balance. Like there's never gonna be this perfect work-life balance. 
um, but just trying to go all in uh, in all the areas uh, so that you can try to uh, maintain the, the best harmony. And I really love that. Somebody said it the other day. They said, uh, I can't remember who it was. It was somebody that was, he, oh, it was a guy named Chris Collins I was having lunch with the other day. And he said, man, I don't really believe in, in balance. I focus on the harmony. And I was like, man, where did you hear that? He's like, I, I don't know. It just kind of came, came to me. And I was like, man, that's beautiful, really. Um, this idea of harmony, not not balance. Um, so that's, that's my focus, certainly, in life. Um, and what I think we're going to show you in this video is kind of what that looks like on a day by day and, and certainly on a weekly basis uh, for my life right now uh, with my family and, and all that goes into that. So we're about to pull up to the school here and uh, surprise my daughter. We can't obviously take Pablo into the school because that might be a little creepy of taking footage of other people's kids. It's probably a probably a, a no-go there, but uh, when I come walking out the side door, we'll uh, have Pablo there to capture some footage of my unbelievable little princess. If your perspective changes, what you're looking at changes, yeah. right? And so people people want that situation, that obstacle in their life to change. That probably can't change, but what can change is your perspective. Mm -hmm. You change your perspective, and all of a sudden, like, oh, now it's a way around it, over it, through yeah. it, whatever it is. And so that's that's and the books. And that's what you're, yeah, that's what I was about to say. Yeah. That's exactly what you're doing. You're constantly looking for for new perspectives. I was a little bit hesitant in, in how we how 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 we put that out there. Yeah. Because there's people that, that are going to watch the vlog that they don't have a relationship with God at all. Right. And yeah. that's okay. No, yeah, they're uninterested. It's not right that's, now. No. And I say that's okay. It's not okay to stay that way. Right. But that's okay that that's where they're at right now in their life. And that, that season that they're that they're in in their life. And, and I'm just not the person that's going to, you know, get real close to the camera and say, like, you need to figure it out. And you're going to figure it out today. I'm, I'm the guy that wants to just show you the impact that it's made on your life. The impact that it's had on my life, the impact it's had on Dave Walton's life that that you'll see in this episode, like to just show you stories, just right. like just stories of, of people that, man, they were in a bad place and they had this relationship that came about right. in a myriad of different ways. Mm -hmm. And now their life is different. Right. They still have struggles. They still go through problems. They still yeah. have obstacles on a daily basis, but now they have a different lens. Yep that they see those problems in. Correct. And they have a different relationship with someone that can help them through those. Yeah. And that to me is, is the encouragement to get out to everyone is that, that, that there's a person out there that now when you're going through that issue, now when you're going through that struggle, someone's got your back. Yeah. And it's not like your buddy that's like, you know, your friend of yours that you call up. It's like someone's really got your back yeah. and they're gonna be with you in all, in all times. And I think that that's, that's, that's that's the way I want to really kind of frame things. Um, and, and maybe it's a little bit more subtle than it should be. Or maybe for some people, it's a little bit more, more no, like aggressive, up, right. aggressive than, yeah. it, than, it, than it could be. Right. Rather than should be. Well, and there's this, so like two big things that just stick out to me. One, so for someone who just, he's like big fan of Jesus, right? <laughs> <laughs> Huge fan of Jesus. I've been following him since. I've been following him for a long time. He's my friend. Comment on every post. Right. Love, love. <laughs> so, yeah. He, he gives me thumbs up regularly. Um, like, when you talk about winning in every area, right, mm -hmm. the only reason I have hoped to win in areas with relationships with my spouse, with relationships with friends, with my finances, with my businesses, with my job, with my health, right? Mm -hmm. The only way I have any hope, again, this is my lens, the only reason I have any hope to win is because I've already been, it's already been won, hmm. right? So for people who believe in Jesus, they start from a place of victory. They've already won the biggest thing. Mm -hmm. Yet, uh, in the Bible, it's like, you've won, now get to the battlefield. Hmm. You've won, yeah. prepare for war. Mm -hmm. You've won, get to work. So that's really interesting about our faith is the reason I, I know I can win with relationship with my life is because Jesus won the biggest battle at all, of all. But just because the battle's won doesn't mean I don't have a responsibility and an accountability. Yeah. So 
there's this idea of like some people are like why why do you want why why do you talk about Jesus? Why why to win? <laughs> Like, now I have friends who disagree with me and they're like, well, sure. I, don't, I don't think you really existed or maybe you didn't really win or I'm really struggling with it. I was like, I get it. Let's just stay in the dialogue. But you need to know my vantage point. Sure. The reason I'm so excited about it, it we, we won. Yeah. yeah <laughs> like, we, we won. So then it's this other side, like people maybe watching your vlog, right? And they're like, man, can we get back to the daily bread? <laughs> like, this is ridiculous. Yeah. Can we get back in the rap booth studio? <laughs> yeah. Can we like, get back in the recording studio and rap a little more? Like you said, Jesus, more this episode than the first one here. And, and, and generally that thought comes like, I'm offended by Jesus. Okay. Well, if, and, and my only suggestion would be just take a moment, right? Just take a moment and say, okay, if you're offended by Jesus, if you're offended by Jesus, ask yourself questions. What made me that way? How did I come to that way? But then also realize Jesus was followed by thousands and thousands and thousands of people that were offended by him and never once did he push one of them away. So if somebody watches your vlog and says, you talk too much about Jesus, he doesn't accept me, he doesn't like me, they actually don't know it. Yeah. And there's plenty of people that watch my vlog that are offended by Sean Whalen. Right. Exactly. But, right. But they, like it's, it, but he's a, a person that right? existed and still exists. Who has a that, story, who has a narrative. Exactly. So there's really not compared to, well, to Jesus, yeah. but in essence, but, you compare but the reaction. Way, but the fra- but the framework of where that person's coming yeah. from—that's basically what they're saying. Look around, and a guy who's three years ago was in de- broke, yeah. depressed, it, like boom, 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 boom. Mm-hmm. If you think business saved me, <laughs> you haven't been paying attention. Yeah, absolutely. So like, so when people just like drop in on your life. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they don't get it because you have a narrative, right? It's a story, it's an arc. Yeah. So the question I have, like two questions for you in this regard is, like everything you see going on, when you think about Christians, other followers of Jesus, who watch this one, Mm -hmm. right? Like what do you want them to know about your relationship with him, your vantage point of Jesus? Yeah. Because you already said, I'm serving, I kind of just use what I have, kind of going all in. Mm -hmm. But like, if you could just speak directly to them, like, what would you say? I think it would be that man, even in, even in that lowest point to where I got, which was low, it was bad, really bad, that it was a part of the process that I had to get there. Yeah. And literally, there was this moment I can remember telling my parents about. I, I was living in Ohio at the time, uh, helping a guy launch a business, and and I was living in the basement of this guy that I found through Facebook in his house, and there were no windows on my room. It was this really small room, and it was like pitch dark, and and that was probably the low point for me. But it was in that low point that I had finally like separated myself. I had gotten out of Greenville where all my friends and some family still were and had isolated myself and gotten myself all alone. And it was in that moment when I could hear God speak to me the most. It was like, it was like he had to take me to a place and, and get me to a point in my life where I could finally hear him. Right. In that the same God that was in that basement, you know, whispering to me and telling me that there was more to come and that, and that I wasn't alone. It's the same God that's with me now, yeah. you know? And that to me is, is the ultimate encouragement is that for those that are going through struggles or just came out of one or are headed towards one, which is pretty much covered by the <laughs> Yeah. So the world. <laughs> yeah. So that, that there's a reason why you are where you are right now. Whether that's in a great place or whether that's in a terrible place, that there's a reason for it and that it can be used. I look at it as nothing short of a miracle, (laughs) quite frankly, to go from where I was to where I am now, that I just, I believe that we should be God's way of showing off. Mm -hmm. Where so much of the the world wants you to believe that Christians should be this, um, like, not, to say materialistic is not the right word, but that that income and that all these things like those, those shouldn't matter. That we should somehow be just like living on the streets, like serving everyone twenty four seven. But I just feel like we should be God's way of 
of showing what's possible, mm. you know, and and living life in a way that the only way this could have happened is that if God's hand was in it. That that's the only way that you could take somebody from being completely broke and, and depressed four years ago to where I am now is is because God's hand was in it. But then the, the question I want to come back to is: so now looking inside of you, yeah, right. So go go inside of you. When you look at Jesus with this pathway you're up, mm-hmm. like what what would you say to him about the vantage point that you're at? Like how would you define your vantage point of him to him? How would I describe my vantage point of him to him? I think the best way I would describe it is someone who's ex- is is this idea of just like extreme patience <laughs> okay, <good. laughs> of just like man so many years and years of just of like using that relationship and not really investing in the relationship and feeling like now is like this time in my life where i feel like I can finally actually participate. (laughs) That like, now I can finally be like, oh, this is not (laughs) one-sided. Like, I can actually do things that actually further your kingdom, that it's not just you (laughs) on that side. So I think for me, it's just like, I just imagine like, if, if it were any other human on this planet, they would have given up a long time. (laughs) Right. <laughs> you know, they've been like, all right, um, I've made all these things happen. Like, this guy just doesn't matter. Right. Like, <laughs> just move on. Just, <laughs> like, let's just move on right. and find somebody else that that we, that'll use what they have. Right. <laughs> um, and so just, and that's, I think, just a great, a great vantage point. Let's talk about like those first two years and really the first three years, like 200 plus nights of me being in a hotel. I think at first, the first year was, I mean, they were all about the same. Yeah. But the first year was working. Yeah. 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 First year you're working. Well, first two, first Uh, year and a half. Year and a half. I was working. So I was working like 60 hours a week. Yeah. Cause it had been 2015 and then we had art in 2016. You quit your job in June, June issue of 2016. So about a year and a half. You were working, so that made it a little easier, I guess. Yeah, it made it a lot easier. I mean, I was working 60 hours a week, so I mean, it was kind of like just part of it. Yeah. Um, And then... But it wasn't, let's not, you just made it sound like it was super easy. It was super awesome. (laughs) Just gone on the road, 230. No, I mean, it was hard, but it it wasn't anything compared to like when I was pregnant or when we first had Arden. Like that was a struggle. Yeah. And even like, I mean, having our, or even up until recently, like you, you just stopping travel, like up until you recently just cut way, way back. It was still hard. Mm-hmm. I mean, single moms, single dads, single parents do not get enough credit. That's for sure. Because oh, yeah. it is freaking hard. Yeah, absolutely. And that's with one, I can't even fathom two, three, four. Like mm-hmm. literally I can't even. You have literally. <sighs> Don't touch my donut plates. <laughs> <laughs> so, one big thing that we have been talking about is that obviously communication is key in relationships. Mm-hmm. And one of those things that I talked about, it will probably be on this vlog on the Sales Wheels podcast, is about how, like, being able to communicate with your spouse or significant other. Like when I was traveling, like there's been times over the last year specifically, where basically I was traveling a lot. I started doing some weekend stuff, like with speaking and things like that. And you were able to tell me like, hey, you're traveling a whole lot right now. Like you probably need to cut that back. Mm -hmm. And then I was able to say, got it. Like, cool. Well, what did I say then? Well, I mean, what was my response? I mean, there was definitely some pushback at first. It wasn't like you were like, okay, well, but it, but then it, you were it, like, well, and it, a lot of that was because 
I was just starting to speak on stages and that was like exciting yeah. to me. I mean, I think the biggest thing with any of it, with any of, I mean, communication is huge and there definitely are times where we do struggle with it. And mm -hmm. I think at the beginning we definitely struggled because when you were traveling, it's hard to, it kind of felt like we were combining two lives. I mean, we had this conversation a lot when yeah. you were traveling. Um, not really like arguments, like we've never really, I mean, everybody argues, but not like, like all out like fights, but like, it was extremely hard at first because it was like you were you were gone in Atlanta, you had your Georgia life. I had my life here in Greenville. Um, not that they were anything exciting, it was really just us. But, <laughs> but I mean, it was still hard when we, we had our own routines, like figuring out yeah. like, okay, who's gonna go to the gym at this time and who's gonna go at this time? And you're like, oh wait, I don't eat dinner until nine o'clock when I'm on the road and yeah. I'm in bed at nine o'clock. And so it was, on the weekends, it was very hard to, um, to Mesh. combine mesh life so I think that goes back to communication being extremely important but I think there's a lot to be said for things becoming routine and like sometimes people look at I know from the outside looking in there were a lot of people that looked at, at our lives and they would say to me like talk to me like I was some terrible terrible husband because I was on the road so much I'm like it's just it became routine like it was just like Sunday night or Monday morning I mean I don't think like every Georgia. person every couple could do it that's for sure I mean it was hard no. but I've also always been like independent. extremely independent so over the last six months I would say mm -hmm. um, there's been a big, pretty big transition in my life as far as priorities um, right right <laughs> <laughs> you're like when did the I'm not sure. Yes. Um, what has that been like? So, I mean, again, I was basically traveling three weeks a month, mm -hmm. at least, if not every right. week. And, you know, this idea of putting everybody else first and putting out all this content and, you know, basically going to sleep, replying to comments, and then waking up, replying to comments, and just like, putting myself last and then you guys even further behind that <laughs> back of the bus i mean to some degree i guess mm -hmm. so so what has that transition been like like have you able, have you been able to no, notice a difference arden definitely has yeah she is <laughs> <laughs> i haven't but your daughter really has noticed Arden that you're acts, around now. Arden acts like I do not exist. Um, <laughs> no, but I, yeah, I mean, I think there's really no question about it that it's been a huge help with us. It's especially with you being able to be home at five o'clock. I mean, that's like not been heard of our entire relationship. Um, and so especially... Five thirty, six, six thirty, seven. Going to record rap videos at eight p.m. <laughs> All the time. All the time. <laughs> Every Tuesday. Every Tuesday. Turn up Tuesday. You know the schedule. <laughs> Pablo, um, tell him. Pablo. <laughs> <laughs> tell him about it. <laughs> um, Life of Pablo. How about one funny story about me? This is good. So. <laughs> He used to have these night tears, and everyone's gonna enjoy this. Bed we did bugs. not literally have bed I bugs. Just thought things were in the bed. He would have night tears and think that they were like snakes and ants yeah, and different. It was like he would flip on all the lights, tell me screaming to get out of bed. So the whole reason I was why he to went. Save you. So, <laughs> the I want you to get bit by a snake. So the whole reason He's, why he got this chivalry CPAP, is not dead. The CPAP machine was because when I got pregnant, I was like, "There's no way that." Arden is gonna be sleeping in the bedroom with us the first like few weeks and you're gonna flip on all the lights with this newborn in the bed or next to our bed and screaming that there's snakes and ants spiders. and spiders. Spiders were thick one in our bed. So and that's so so I had to do a sleep study mm -hmm. where I had to like get hooked up to all these different like You stayed at the hospital things at the little um, hospital it was like this little facility. Well, whatever. In this super hot bedroom that I had to sleep and be watched all night. And they said that like I had a slight sleep apnea when I was laying on my back only, 
But the answer was this freaking CPAP machine. They also put me on medicine to like go deeper sleep because I basically wasn't getting into a deep sleep. And then when I was in that kind of like light That's first area of sleep is when, when, the, when the spiders would come. <laughs> I was legitimately like, I'm not awake, but I'm half awake. And like, I am convinced, like convinced that there's a snake in the bed or, or like spiders. I would get my iPhone flashlight out and be like going through the sheets, like looking. I would like wake up and I'd be like, oh my gosh. Not just his iPhone, I'm talking the Turn on the lights. lights every at 2 a.m. in the morning, like rip off all the covers, the sheets, the pillows. And she's like, what are you doing? I would say like, there's, Screaming there's for me snake, to get out of there's the bed. a snake in the bed. And then there was always this moment, like this moment where I would like come to and I would realize, and I would always get so embarrassed. I'm like, oh. But yeah, like when I would come to it, I would just get super frustrated and I would just like go to the bathroom and try to like hope that when I came back out, you'd be asleep and you'd forget about it. But then, <laughs> but then I would the always- Make the bed back would, up. <laughs> but then I would always get a text message about noon the next day to be like, hey, remember those snakes that almost got us last night? And I'm like, dang it. All right guys, I hope you enjoyed episode two of My Living Legacy as we really focused in on relationships. And I think it's, probably one of the most powerful uh, of the four areas of your life that we want to make sure that you're winning in. Um, because we don't want people just to come on board and, and to really take hold of the things that we're going to be laying out in this vlog and have their relationships out of sync. To be able to be successful financially, but then look up and realize that there's no one else around them because they burnt all their relationships to the ground. So uh, you've seen a lot of different um, aspects of relationships, relationships with God, relationships with friends, family, and obviously now being able to look at you know relationships with your spouse and some of the keys there and some probably funny stories that I'm sure will get edited into this vlog from this conversation yep. we've just had in my dining room um, that usually has a table, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> I think Does it's it? like one of those like people that buy like a, a mansion it? and they don't have furniture. <laughs> Not the case, it's right there, I swear, <laughs> I swear. So with that guys, this is episode two. What I would love for you to do is comment below what your favorite part of this vlog was. What part hit you the most? What impacted you the most? What did you resonate with the most? Make sure you put that in the comments. And please, whatever you do, don't say that it was having my wife because we can't do this anymore. I can't. Every episode I'll be here. <laughs> The Hustler's You're Wife welcome. blog is coming back. Maybe. The hey. third blog entry is going to come. It's still You safe. can edit that out. <laughs> <laughs> That's probably for the best. Ooh, man.